As you well know by now, a courageous person is a man or a woman who simply has courage, has the ability to face or deal with anything that is recognized as dangerous, difficult, or painful without withdrawing from it. The courageous person or the person who has courage knows that harm can come to them but they deal with it anyway see you're not necessarily being courageous or you're not necessarily demonstrating courage if you don't know that you could get hurt or get fired or get labeled or mistreated for dealing with a particular thing Courage is when you know that there is a potential price to be paid, but you make your stand anyway. Oh, I'm asking God to anoint us to be courageous because I'm telling you, we're going to need courage uh, in the times to come. The courageous believer is the brave believer. Anybody can be brave or can, can claim a relationship with God, but that brave believer steps out and says what need, need to be said and does what need to be done. In our text, we find that Daniel was a man of faith, prayer. We find that he was a man of uh, exceeding uh, intellect. Very smart guy. Um, he was a man of great vision, but yes, Daniel was a man of great courage. Let's take a look at Daniel and his companions, his companions in the contextual setting. I want you to follow me today. We might shout in the end. The book of Daniel begins with the disaster, the disaster that has finally ended the Jewish kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has conquered Jerusalem, disposed its king, removed Jehoiakim, and taken some of its royal and noble young men captive. As was typical in the ancient Near East, Nebuchadnezzar made sure to take vengeance on the gods, or in this case, God of the vanquished nation. By He would plunder their temple, take their gold and silver out of the house of the conquered nation's God and put it in the house of his own false God. So Nebuchadnezzar was not only the enemy of Israel, but he was the enemy of God. Daniel begins with the fall of Jerusalem. And I want to tell you something. Jerusalem fell for the same reasons, hear me now, that America is about to fall. Our great nation is in trouble. Let me tell you why Jerusalem fell. 2 Kings chapter 24, just four short verses. And I want to show you something. In the days of, Nether, in the days of Nether, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up and Jehoiakim became his servant. Three years, and then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against Jehoiakim bands of the Chaldees. Look at God sending an enemy 
against Judah. The Lord did it. And bands of Syrians, the Lord sent them. And bands of the Moabites, the Lord sent them. And bands of the children of Ammon. And sent them against Judah to destroy it. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah, to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did. And also, listen, for the innocent blood which he shed. For he filled the streets of Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Manasseh filled the streets of Jerusalem with innocent blood. 2 Kings 21 and 16 says, Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from, look at this, one end to the other. Besides his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing all that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. The reference to filling the streets with innocent blood is threefold. Number one, it was Manasseh sacrificing the innocent children of Israel to the god Molech. Molech statue had his arms stretched open to welcome the children. That was a Trough and the children were walked down the middle of the trough, mom on one side, dad on the other. The trough was set on fire, and the children were literally burned alive. And the drums played loud music to drown out the sound of the children screaming as parents sacrificed their children to Molech in order to gain favorable circumstances so that their crops would grow, so that their money would grow, so that things would work right for them. They sacrificed their children. The second reference to uh, killing, uh, the, the, filling the streets with innocent blood was killing innocent people so as to confiscate their land. Yes, Manasseh was like Ahab. He wanted your property and you wouldn't sell it, he'd kill you and find a way to take it. Innocent people died and their land was confiscated. Thirdly, uh, Josephus tells us that Manasseh, throughout his 55 years of terror, Manasseh killed a few prophets of God every day. Every day he made sport of killing God's prophets. So under the reign of Manasseh, Judah was a bloody place. I'm going to ask the brethren to put my, put exhibit A on the screen. Praise the Lord if you were short uh, back there in the control room, I want to show you something. There is a, a, a celebration going on, right? Look at that. Look at, a, look at it. Aren't they happy? Fist pumping. Look at that. Cool. Look at those pretty people. Celebrating 100 years strong of planned parenthood. An organization that was started for the extermination of black people, according to his founder. They're celebrating 100 years. Show the billboard. Show the billboard. I want you to see the billboard. Look at this billboard. This is an actual billboard. Black children are, in, are an endangered species. 
Now go to too many aborted.com. Planned Parenthood celebrating their centennial anniversary. At the same time, presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is vowing, vowing to ensure uh, more black women can have more abortions by making abortions free. God is going to judge this nation and judge everybody who has any input. You can't separate yourself from that. What about that other guy and all them women and stuff? That ain't policy. That was years ago. But this, this policy move she's talking about now will kill us. Some of us still believe that black folk ought to live. Some of us still believe that the first civil right is the right to be born. And how do you have a celebration like that? And, and we're celebrating 100 years of being the modern day version of the house of Mole. If that behavior brought Judah and the mighty southern kingdom, which was supposed to be the holy kingdom of the two. So we knew the northern kingdom was wicked. Started under Jeroboam. But the southern kingdom was supposed to be righteous. We see God turning on the southern kingdom. The Lord sent the Chaldeans. The Lord sent, praise the Lord, the children of, of, of Ammon. The Lord sent the children of Mount Seir against the southern kingdom. Why? Because the southern kingdom was spilling innocent blood. Oh, at the abortion clinic yesterday, they were very, very active. Very active. They don't never, they hardly ever suffer. <coughs> for a lack of business. And it seems as though black folk have a, a gene that says exterminate your own. And another reason, and I say amen, another reason we connected with Molech is according to studies, 98% of the time reason for the abortion is the child is an inconvenience. An inconvenience that manifests itself in various ways, such as I got to graduate from college, such as I'm not married to the man that I'm pregnant for, such as I, I got to make sure no one finds out about this. However it manifests, it's in the category of an inconvenience. So we found a way. Isn't it amazing? The, the progressives and the most racist white people of them all, because you can't be no more racist than wanting us not to be born. You, so they want to make us think that the racist, the racist people are the uh, white conservatives. No, the white conservatives fight for you to be born. Amen. Both race, you can't love people and champion their extermination. You can't do it. You just can't. And I, yeah, I've said it. You can't. You can't do that. You can't do that. And these people are celebrating our demise. And they found a way to get rid of us and for the most part, make us pay for it. Man, in Beijing, we will laugh at and scoff at the notion of building a wall and making Mexico pay for it. But they found a way to get us to kill our own and get us to pay for it. If it brought down Judah, if this behavior brought Judah to its knees 
and caused the mighty temple of Solomon to burn to the ground. And all of the beautiful things that took place, and one of the reasons Solomon's temple was burnt was uh, Manasseh desecrated it. He did like the government said they want to do now. We want to make things fair for everybody, for everybody. All right, well, they made it fair for everybody. They put altars to false gods in the temple. They put altars to false gods in the inner and the outer court of the temple of Solomon, where God said, I have put my name here forever. They began to study the practice of wizards and witchcraft and all that stuff, and everything that God outlawed, Judah embraced. And when the nation began to embrace that which God calls an abomination, They made a mistake. They fell out with God. Now, it's all right. I can make it if I fall out with you, but I can't make it if God falls out with me. <laughs> Judah fell out with God. Now, let me say this. There's anybody listening who has had an abortion. I want to give the proper uh, sensitivity, and you've repented of your sins. You're not who I'm talking to, but I still need you to say amen and help me save the next child. See, that's the thing about that. You ain't got to feel guilty, but don't you, don't you take the position, well, I can't say anything, uh, and I feel bad. I don't want to hear that because that just reminds me, if you, if you washed in the blood, you washed in the blood. But this, this thing that's going on, even as we speak, almost 18, uh, 1,876 black babies per day per day come from that, that many from 8% of the population. African-American community make up 13%, but our women make up 8%. How is it that 8% of the, of the population is responsible for almost 40% of the nation's abortions? You know we can't survive those numbers. We deserve better. We deserve better. That's why we find Judah in a fallen state. Let me look at our text for a minute. Are you following me? This is good preaching. Amen. And, and what's sad is you won't hardly hear it anywhere. Because every church, we're going to get our stuff today. We're going to we're, uh, preach it against the haters, and we're going to get our stuff, and the Lord will give you all your stuff back. Well, that, there's more things to this than stuff. See, uh, I, that, there's a lot that's at stake today. People are celebrating 100 years of killing us. We we'll say, well, the, 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 more than blacks have abortion. That's true but it disproportionately affects us. And we're targeted like no other group. And one of the reasons we're targeted, I'll be honest with you, we're targeted because we're, we're, we're the most vulnerable. And we're the most vulnerable because we don't think as we ought. You got to think about this stuff. In the world in which we live in now, the truth is the strong survive. The weak pay. If you are walk on a bull, they will walk on you. Praise the Lord. If you are, can be had a bull, they will uh, take advantage of you. It's the world in which we live. It's the way it is. Here's a group of people who seem who will cheer Candidate stand up and says, I'm going to get rid of the Hyde Amendment, which will add almost 300,000 more abortions to the record of poor people, poor blacks. And the president can, can, can campaign for that, and we applaud. I'm stunned. Can I get a witness? Are you going to say amen for me? Let me go back to this. Now, 
among the youth that was taken captive were Daniel and his companions, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were enrolled in an indoctrination program designed to transfer exiles into loyal servants of their new king. This presented both an opportunity and a challenge. The opportunity was to make good lives for themselves in a hostile world. That was good. The challenge was perhaps to bring God's power and justice to a new country. That was the challenge. According to our text, verse 3, Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, were given the responsibility of mentoring the children of Israel. Young folk, don't let the word children fool you. They were not uh, infants. They were young people. They were teenagers. They were Judean youth. Listen to me, young folk. We're about to study the behavior, not of grown people, but teenagers. By the time we get toward the end of the book of Daniel, he's 80 years old. But in the beginning, we find Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah as teenagers. Kids. Good God Almighty. Taken from their homeland to a hostile country. Can I get a witness? Amen. They, uh, not only were they teenagers, but I'll, I'll show you in a minute, they were traumatized teenagers because they didn't catch a cruise ship and go up to Babylonia. They didn't plan a trip and just fly up there first class or even business class or whatever. They were ripped away from their homeland as their homeland burned and taken to a hostile land. They were young people. They were teenagers. They were the elite of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes. They were the finest of our land. Our country has young people like these, even today. We've got fine young people, wonderful young folk. These fine young people are the ones whom the devil is after. He wants the fine young folk the most. Those with keen minds and promising features. Not just not just a promising future, but promising features. Satan wants the good looking. Listen to me. Satan wants the handsome man, the attractive girl. Because people pay, pay attention to the outward appearance. The Bible says that. The Bible says man looketh on the outward appearance. See, we stress, but God looketh upon the heart. No, no, man looketh on the outward appearance. Part of what sells Beyonce's records is what she looked like. All of what sells Jennifer Lopez's records is what she looked like. That'll dawn on the rest of you tomorrow sometime. Smart, handsome, intelligent young men and young ladies, beware. Satan is after you. The 
devil wants to co corrupt you. Amen. His goal was to corrupt them, and uh, he will go a long way. If he can corrupt them, he can go a long way toward destroying the rest of us because people have influence. You better know that you have influence over somebody. Second thing you better know is God, God holds you responsible for who you influence. And if you make someone go astray, your blood, their blood will God require at your hand. Amen. With influence comes responsibility. Are you with me? So we're dealing for a few more minutes with teenagers. Amen. Now, if you study 2 Kings chapter 25 and read from verse 9 through 21, you'll read at your leisure, for time's sake I won't read it, the fall of Jerusalem, how Jerusalem fell, how it was burned, how he took these kids captive. And an and inter interesting thing, he left the poor to glean the grapes and to, and to work the fields. But he took these other people. I'm hoping, I'm hoping some young person in here will, will, are saying to themselves, Satan, you can't have me. He, he took these others to, because he, Nebuchadnezzar had a long-term plan. His goal was to take them, corrupt them, turn them into Chaldeans, and then send them back to Jerusalem at an appointed time, uh, you know, about like they've done in, in the universities. The hippies shave their beards. The rebellious shave their beards, cut their hair, those rebellious progressives, and got jobs as professors. And now when you're, our children go to these universities, the devil stands up there disguised as a professor and that devil is trying to separate them from everything that they've been told. That's it. Well, I wonder what happened to the beatniks. I wonder what happened to these people. They got jobs. They got hired. They infiltrated the educational system. John Dewey, they got in the system. Took and put those wicked folk in place. And then when we tell, send our children to school, we tell them, obey the authority. And the authority now is the devil. Experience this message in its entirety by calling toll-free 877-463-3477 to purchase your copy in CD or DVD format. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.